I want to keep this skin. This skin is going to come up nice and crispy. You can just see how nice the fat is. Look at your knife. Okay, that's going to tell you a great tale. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Okay, that, that, that shows you a lot right there. And that tells me, look how nice and clean it is. And what we're going to do here, too, since we got this fish, is just take a nice little trim off it. And look how you can still see through your knife. You can still uh, see through the fat or the fish. Yeah, yeah. translucent. Beautiful. There's nothing in there. Wow, that's Beautiful. great. Okay, so now we want to tranche of this. Okay, tranche being French for thick slice. Okay, but look at the shine. It's beautiful. So we got a little slits in there. Okay, I'm gonna season it up a little bit. Salt, pepper. You know, when you work with good products, messing it up is uh, kind of hard to do if you just don't overdo it. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna cook this, this uh, not skin side down right away. Okay. Okay, I wanna get a nice sear on it because I wanna take my time. It's a big piece. I can even put it on its side, okay, and cook it on all one, two, three, four sides. I can cook this all the way around. I don't have to do one side or the other like some of the other things that we do. Excellent. Uh, what we're gonna use is we're gonna use some chickpeas, some Spanish chorizo, some manila clams, escarole, and we've just made a real simple broth here. Carrot juice, uh, chicken stock, and a little orange juice. So we got a little acid, we got some body in there, and we got some nice flavor, real light. I don't, I got butter, I got fat, everything I need in this fish right here. All I want to do is try and fill the, the other, your other, the other mouth feel, the other, the other taste buds that are crying out. So we're going to get some salty in there, a little sweet. All right, so that's, beautiful, and beautiful. now it's starting to cook up. Okay, so we're going to let can, that sear, and now we're going to, going to take some of our carrot juice, our reduction, I, I like to call it a little citrus broth, put it in there. Okay, just so we're just going to simmer some chickpeas in there. Okay, I love using different ingredients, chickpeas, kiwa, bulgur we talked yes, about yeah, earlier we today. About the bulgur. Yeah, you know, it's just not it's about potatoes anymore. So we're gonna go with that. And I can see on the bottom here, I'm not I'm not just even gonna use my hands. Look at the fat coming off. Look this. at that. Okay, so I'm gonna pull it away so we don't burn anybody. Because boy, Whoa. but look at that. Okay. Now what I wanna do, very carefully, when you are flipping fish, you don't wanna splatter it. It is gonna hurt. Nice. So and as you can hear it. Pop, 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 pop. One thing I'm noticing now is I don't hear a lot of popping. And I, I have, a, after what I witnessed today, or after what I saw today, it's because of that dry cryovac. That was something, because this is telling me it's not popping, it means there's not a lot of moisture in here. So now I'm gonna take my spoon, I'm just gonna take my, let my hand, tilt down my skill a little bit, I'm gonna get all that nice fat to baste it. That's gonna come up oh, really good. See, and now I'm getting all the flavors. This is classic. This is the way you cook fish. When you have that much fat, and you can really oh go to God. town with it, okay? And look at this. I, I'm not using a Teflon pan. I am using a nice pan. Not, I'm just gonna use my hands, too, because I'm not even afraid of this. Well, ow, just oh, kidding. Look at that. But I'm gonna get nice color. It's coming off. We're gonna keep going at it. Boy, that's just, look at that. Nice golden brown on top. The skin is cooking. There's not a lot, but this is it right here. This, to me, is the secret to this fish, or one of the secrets, one of the many and that is this packaging right here. It's the dry, the, the dryness that this packaging is in. So it's wrapped in, what is this called? This this is the Japanese moisture retention paper. The, and you, it's obvious in that. A lot of times when you cook with skin on, what happens is the moisture finally starts hitting that pan. And that's when you're, you, you get things stuck together. That's when everything gets stuck because it's the moisture hitting the oil. So you, you literally have like a, a uh, water and oil combination fighting on the bottom of your pan. And it tends to, your skin tends to be the loser. So see, look, look at, at that. that. Look at that, that's nice. One thing I notice, is see how, now how the skin is not coming off when I peel it with my fingers? Exactly. That means the fish isn't done. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now I'm gonna cook it on this side, okay, and get a real nice roast all around. But boy, and now I can also see when it's gonna get be done. It's cooking right through. When this gets nice and white, it's done. But when the skin comes off, there you go, when the skin comes off, that's gonna tell wow. me it's done. It's a no-brainer. The skin comes off, your fish is done. So we're gonna get so we got some nice color on here. Meanwhile, I got my broth heating up, okay? And I'm gonna take advantage, I wanna take advantage of all this flavor in the pan, okay? That's the fond or the foundation of, of, of uh, cooking. I'm curious to know what the diet is of this fish, because some fish tend to, tend to you know, want more, uh, have a particular taste. But yeah, definitely, um, yeah, well, I see a lobster uh, kind of flavor. You get, it definitely looks like it's eating a shellfish. You know, it definitely looks like it's shellfish. And, and, you, I, and when you, you smell that, you're, you're, 
you're smelling flavor. You're not smelling a fishy, oh my gosh, kids are running away from the kitchen. You know, you're, you're really, you're really nice. But look at the amount of fat on that. You saw, I, I probably put in maybe, a, what, a tablespoon and a half of butter, and look how much is coming out. And I'll tell you, a little bit of patience and just basting that like that, you're just, it's a beautiful thing. Yeah, that's a beautiful thing. I mean, look at the color we're getting on this. That, that, I tell you, I'm ready to eat right now. I'm kind Absolutely. of getting Absolutely, that's, that's okay. fucking beautiful. So we're gonna finish this off here. We're gonna, we're gonna go for the home run here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take it out of the pan, excuse me, and I'm going to just take this, this, save that right there. Now I got a nice hot pan. I got my broth here, okay, and I'm gonna move this out of the way. Look at that. I'm gonna take a little bit, okay. Wow, now I'm getting everything. Now I'm getting it all. Okay, I'm getting, I'm maximizing all the flavor I can get. And look at the color I'm getting. Whoa. Look at the color, okay? It's, oh, it's, just, it's, just, it's just starting to scream happiness. Incredible okay. aromatics, very, very Aromatics, young. very simple, okay? But again, using quality ingredients, your job should be easy. Okay, when you don't have quality ingredients, you have a long day. Whoa, and I'm just feeling just a wonderful okay. rustic winter style There we go, of now we got, so we're gonna here. pop some chorizo in there. Okay, and this chorizo is gonna give it a nice hue to it, a nice red hue. Some clams, here's our salt right there. All right, we've used, we were using the sea salt. We also can get a little bit of salt out of these guys. So a very natural way to cook, okay? Now what I wanna do is I wanna take that fish, I'm gonna use my tongs now, put that right back in Whoa. there, okay? There we go. I'm gonna pop that sucker in the oven, okay? Uh, you can put a lid on it. There we go. So now we're gonna let that simmer for a bit and we're gonna get ready to finish it. I'm gonna finish it with some escarole. Okay, escarole, it's a little bitter, and so we got the sweetness of the fish, that lobster-like uh, uh, flavor. So what better to, to offset it with than some escarole? What's nice about this too, with this application, I can go red or white with wine. Mm. I can mm. go either way, I really can. You know, I, I personally see doing a Pinot, if I wanted to keep the spice, I could go Zinvindel. Um, you know, but a, even a cab would go with this, a big cab, because Absolutely. you got that, that flavor in that fish. Uh, you know, but again, using the chorizo, I might want to go with a Spanish wine, Rioja, something like that. So look at how that comes up. Now, I'm careful not to put any green in it yet, because I'm going to lose my color. I'm going to lose, don't overcook your clams either, there they go. See, they're, they're opening up open. real nice. They're saying hello. Okay, they're, they're saying just saying hello. hello. They're just coming up Look at that. to say hi. Okay, the chorizo hasn't hasn't overcooked. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my fish, set him aside again. Now he's going to rest. Resting in fish very important. When you rest, when fish rests, it's the same as everyone does with turkey or steak. It's allowing the the, the proteins or the muscle to actually relax again because it's just been cooking. You know, you saw it popping all over the place. It's just been cooking. Now it's going to relax. It's actually going to tenderize. And you're going to actually taste the fish. You're not going to be like, whoo, that was hot. So I'm just going to swirl some of the escarole mm. in there. I got nice color. I can even put it back on the stove. OK. There we go. OK, because we always want to taste. I'm not even going to season this. I don't even think it needs it. You so got the now, nice saltiness of the chorizo. Exactly. So now I just want to, you know, the sweetness a of the simple clams. presentation. Again, you. One thing that's nice with presentations like this is you don't have to overdo the plate. You can always mm -hmm. put more on the side. And we're gonna go just a little further. Put him aside. We're done with him. My fish. I'm gonna go right back on top. Yeah, no, this is a beautiful thing. One thing I have to do in Chicago is I have to be ahead of the game. I need every advantage I can get. I think there's 4,000 restaurants in Chicago, and one thing that, that Honolulu Fish has helped me do is take an, get an edge on it. I can, I, can, I can look at my customers and say, hey, I got the freshest thing I can get, and I've done my job. And it's mainly because you guys have done yours. So it's a beautiful thing. I can garnish it, but we're talking about oh, fish. Beautiful. Let the fish speak for itself. We do, we blanched some parsley and then we put some fresh parsley in. So there the we go. We there got a nice little contrast again, you know, you know, uh, colored oils. Very nice, good flavor, clean. I think we got, you know, I think we got it. Again, they eat the skin, it's gonna be tasty. This is a clean dish. This is clean eating, extra sauce, always sauce left over. So anything you want to wipe up with a good piece of bread, you're, you're putting it all together. Chef, informative, fun, great yeah. to meet you. Uh, love that you came by and, and, and saw us, and look what you did for us. That's absolutely beautiful. Um, I can't wait to take a bite of that. Yeah, that and, uh, Bill? Thank you. Thank you very much. It's been a pleasure, and what a learning experience, I'll tell you. Every chef should do this. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs>
And thank you Good. once again, Honolulu Fish and Chef Patrick from Parker's. There you go.